How many loaves do you produce a day? Every day we do average of 2,500 loaves. 2,000 loaves a day. When I did try the bread, I wish I could eat it again. Um, I finished it very quickly. Uh, it, is, <laughs> it is incredible bread. Uh, and that's the recommendation that's thrown the spotlight on the man who bakes traditional Nigerian bread, popularly known as Agege bread in Ontario, Canada. We bring you the success story of the Matlock Bakery brand. Find out more about the art of serving up Nigerian ingredients in new and innovative ways for taste buds across the world on our special report. And meet the pastry chefs who've gained global recognition for their mastery of Nigerian street food culture. Welcome to Diaspora Network. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Let's begin with a look at the news this week. The UK's Birmingham City University has appointed Professor David Mba as their new Vice Chancellor. Professor Mba will officially take up his new role on October the 1st, replacing his predecessor of six years, and he will oversee prospective students' plans for 2030 and beyond. Until then, he continues his post as Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research, Knowledge Exchange and Enterprise at the University of Arts, London. Professor Mba gained his PhD from Cranfield University in 1999 where he studied mechanical engineering. In 2010, he was awarded the Institution of Mechanical Engineers Ludwig Mond Prize for his contributions to chemistry. In addition to this, he also serves on the advisory board of the Association for Black and Minority Ethnic Engineers UK. He says he's looking forward to defining and delivering the school's significant ambitions for the next decade. British Nigerian artist Skepta has revealed his clothing line, Mains London, will be making a comeback during London Fashion Week after a two-year break. The UK rap legend's brand, Mains, is described as a premium contemporary unisex brand and is designed in collaboration with new chief designer, Mikey Pierce, and graphic designer, Johnson Orchard. The artist and producer, who has featured in several hit songs such as WizKid's Energy and ASAP Rocky's Praise the Lord, has also posted several spontaneous teasers of his clothing line over the years and was recently spotted wearing new unreleased designs at the 2023 Wimbledon Games. Previous collections included a selection of essentials such as t-shirts, tracksuits, outwear and accessories. Skepta says his vision is to create staple, crazy, beautiful, wearable clothes. Teniola Oyetayo with your Diaspora Network News Wrap from London. Here are some of the chefs giving us a taste of something new and challenging ideas around Nigerian food culture. My name is Marianne and I am one of the four sisters that make up Pop Pop Ministry. Fola, Marianne, Yossi and Lola are sisters with a culinary heritage and spent most of their childhood running from the living room to their mom's bakery at the back of their grandfather's house in Lagos, Nigeria. The sisters moved to the UK in 2007 and in 2020 using their mother's 20-year-old recipe. They launched a pastry business, Puff Puff Ministry in Wood Green, North London. Their mission is to share the joy of Nigerian food and make the delicious fried dough bowl, also known as Puff Puff, Britain's next favorite treat. They decided to put their own spin on it by adding familiar toppings like Oreos and Nutella to the fried dough bowl. Three years later, they are spreading the joy of Puff Puff at events with delivery service to homes and offices across the UK. They have worked with renowned global brands like Google, Netflix, Twitter, Peloton and TikTok. Olugbe Misola Olaomi's title as the bread queen of Chicago began with a collection of Nigerian finger foods also known as small chops, a staple food at parties and social gatherings. Gemisola worked in corporate public health for some years and eventually switched gears after she found that there was a good business opportunity for Nigerian food business in her city. In 2018, she launched Joba Foods and Bakery in Chicago making delicious pastry and bean cake popularly known as Moi Moi 
relying on her lab experience studying at Chicago State University along with some help from her contacts back in Nigeria. She added agege bread, a popular type of Nigerian bread that is loved by many, to her list of delicacies. Over the years, the demand for our products has grown quickly, with stores in neighboring states like Wisconsin and Indiana reaching out to stock her loaves. Tunde Wei is another chef who is dishing out authentic Nigerian cuisine in the diaspora. Based in the United States, he uses Nigerian food and dining spaces as a medium to engage the conversation on immigration, global capitalism and racism. He has wild residents in cities like New Orleans, Chicago and Buffalo with his one-man pop dinner events, Lagos, named after his hometown in Nigeria. For his craft, he has been featured in the New York Times, the Washington Post, Vogue and Black Enterprise. These and many more incredible pastry chefs are showing authentic Nigerian flavors and traditional techniques on a global scale. Indeed, a new crop of Nigerian chefs have emerged, creating menus that are pushing past traditional barriers, and they enjoy creative freedom in their careers, despite the challenges that come with it. Let's take a look. There's a thriving food business in the diaspora, and that's because Nigerians always want to get a taste of home, no matter how away from home they may be. For this reason, Many Nigerian chefs fuse creativity with culture to come up with meals that please not just Nigerians, but people from diverse cultural backgrounds and nationalities. Apart from the staple main courses, such as jollof rice, yam pottage, pepper soup and soups, another thriving area is confectionery, like desserts, pastries and other baked snacks. Many chefs now include specialties like finger food made from fried dough, and served at most gatherings, agege bread, a soft but dense white bread made from a rich low yeast dough, and chinchin, -chin, a snack made from flour, milk and sugar. Others have specialized in this area and received formal training to become pastry chefs. They create delicious and appealing desserts and play a significant role in enhancing the overall dining experience. Using a combination of culinary ability, creativity, artistry, as well as the balance of volume and accuracy. And just the fact that you don't really find the sort of things we offer in, in other places. We focus on what we do well and uh, we aim to sort of improve those things. For my menu, which is the best uh, product? So I think based on numbers and based on what customers want or what they've requested for our donuts, we've, we've been told that our donuts uh, are unrivaled in Lagos. Uh, quite proud of those because they've taken a while to work on. They've taken a while to develop to the current level that they are at now. I, but I there are challenges sort of associated with fusing traditional culture into menus abroad. Despite the challenges of funding, staffing and meeting required standards, Nigerian pastry chefs are pushing the envelope, bringing Nigerian cuisine to the forefront and carving a niche for themselves while at it. We found a lead business analyst whose passion for bread has brought him global recognition and his name is Adewale Rabiu. Meet the business systems analyst who made headlines as the baker of the best agege bread in Canada, Wale Rabiu, founder of Grey Matlock Bakery, was born in Ibadan Oyo State, southwest Nigeria, in 1975. He graduated from Olabisi Onobanjo University in 1999 with a BSc accounting degree and went on to earn a Master's in Managerial Psychology from the University of Ibadan in 2016. He is also an alumnus of the University of Leicester, UK, where he earned an MBA in Finance in 2007. In December 2017, he became a Certified Project Management Professional. Wale Rabiu started his professional career from Standard Trust Bank, now UBA, in 2002 before joining telecommunications giant MTN Nigeria in October 2002, where he worked as general ledger accountant until his resignation. 
He rejoined MTN in 2010 and rose to become the regional sales manager South-South, a position he held till 2015. With over a decade of experience in business process improvement and project and risk management in Nigeria, Wale Rabiu moved to Canada in 2016 with his family. He started off by joining Rogers Communications in Brampton, where he assisted the project team to develop and implement the Aptitude System, a revenue management software. Then he saw a unique business opportunity. The switch wasn't deliberate. It wasn't meant to be. All we wanted as a family then was more of have another um, source of income stream that we needed to not just rely on um, paid employment alone. And I think I need to add that immediately I got to Canada, based on my experience and expertise in telecom in Nigeria, I was able to get uh, a telecom job almost immediately, you know. And I was in Rogers. Rogers is one of the biggest telecom operators in, in, in Canada. So that's where I started my life in Canada from. So it was after spending a year doing that, that I, of course, that the entrepreneurial spirit in me came out. And even before we left the shore of Nigeria, myself and my wife, which is actually a very, I mean, she's an integral part of the business. We, we knew we were going to take any business opportunity that comes our way in Canada. Many still wonder why he chose to bank on Nigeria's traditional bread on a continent so far away from home. So sometimes in 2017, shortly before my wife, before we had our last born, my wife was pregnant. So she was cra craving for bread. All she wanted to eat was bread and sardine. So that was what led to, where is Agege bread? Where is Nigerian bread? And all the bread available in the market, like I said, the Ghanaian bread was tasting so close to our bread, but not exactly what we wanted or what she wanted. I was enjoying it anyway, but she wanted that Nigerian bread taste, you know, and that's why we started thinking of, okay, if there's none and the Nigerian population is growing here, why, how come nobody has ever thought of starting a Nigerian bakery since we have a large community, a relatively large community, you know, and that's where it all started from. To establish the bread business, he traveled back to Lagos, Nigeria's commercial nerve center, to learn the nuts and bolts of agege bread making at a modest bakery. Armed with this experience, Gray Matlock Bakery produced its first commercial consignment of bread in 2018. The business has grown in leaps and bounds as agege bread is available in over 300 African and Caribbean stores across Canada. Today, the company has five franchise locations in Calgary, Ottawa, Oshawa, Waterloo and Windsor. The bakery also offers other successful products like Butterfield sliced bread, whole wheat bread and bread buns. But Agege bread has become so popular in Canada that the mayor of Brampton visited the factory to acknowledge Matlock Bakery's performance, impact and contribution to business in the city. You know, we've been touring small businesses in Brampton to uh, really highlight hidden treasures. Walia came to Brampton in 2016, set up his own small business in 2018, and now this bread is so incredible. So you've opened up locations yeah, we have in, a branch in other cities. In, yeah, we have a branch in Calgary. We have four different franchise locations, Waterloo, Oshawa, Ottawa, and um, Windsor. And it all started in Brampton. Wale, along with his wife and co-founder Omobala Lerabiu, are not slowing down as they devote their time to helping other black-owned businesses in Canada set up operations and map out strategies to upscale operations. Their goal is to make the Matlock brand just as competitive as the renowned household bakeries in Canada and even beyond. Coming up on Diaspora Network, we find out how Dewale Rabiu made the winning decision to bank on a gege bread. Welcome back to Diaspora Network. Let's hear more from the man behind the renowned Matlock Bakery brand. We actually started the business in 2018. So it was a lot, a lot trying to navigate through the process of getting um, business licensing the city approval for the licensing, 
getting even the landlords to agree to give an immigrant, a new immigrant, a commercial property. And the way it works over there is you need to sign a lease, you are bound by the lease. Even if you stop doing your business, you still have to pay out for the time you've signed on the lease. Let's assume you've signed a lease of um, two years. For some reason, the business failed after three, four months. You're still bound by that um, agreement. You still need to pay out on that um, lease agreement, you know. So it was difficult. So landlords are very careful allowing you to sign without them being convinced about your business plan. It's even a common thing that landlords will ask you for a business plan before they lease their commercial property to you. So those are some of the things we, we, had, to, we had to navigate through. Then the first place that we considered to start the bakery wasn't where it, we actually started. It was meant to be around where we live. The city of Milton is about 30 minutes drive to the city of Brampton. But we now look at the cosmopolitan nature of the city of Brampton. The city of Brampton is like saying Lagos in Nigeria, where almost everybody in Nigeria will always have a relative or, or every ethnic nationality, I mean um, tribal and ethnic city in Nigeria that are represented in Lagos. Same thing with the city of Brampton, you know. So there were all sorts of um, immigrants in, in, when I'm all sorts, meaning the uh, different ethnic nationalities, being the Asian, the Caribbean, the Africans, the Caucasian, even the original Canadians, the Aborigines, everybody, you find them in the city of Brampton. So that's where we started the business and that provided us a very beautiful um, um, opportunity to get introduced to almost all the ethnic nationalities. Then the city of Brampton, which is one of the best cities to us and to me in Canada, being um, the, the ease of doing business. You know, the city actually encourages and allows small business to grow. So ease of doing business was very, very favorable for us. So that's why we started in the city of Brampton. Nigerians in Canada, especially in Ontario, Toronto to be specific again, accepted and embraced the bread immediately. So that really helped us. There's no how we will be a national brand. And with all sense of modesty, I'm saying a national brand in Canada, you know, without the support of Nigerians. Because when we started, it was just a bread for the community. Despite our vision to be everywhere in Canada, but we knew no matter what, a, a journey of 1,000 miles start with a step. So we knew we needed to start with our own people and they embraced it, they accepted the products. You know, you can imagine walking into a grocery store, which is, I mean, African Caribbean grocery stores, that's where we started from. And you see somebody stepping out with four or five loaves of um, agege bread and you are from the Caribbean, you're Jamaican, and you'd be wondering, why, why, why is he buying that much? What's special about the bread? And those are some of the things that we saw happening then. You know, so the Nigerians accepted it. The next minute we see the Jamaicans, the Caribbean people accepting the bread. Before them, the other African countries started buying the bread. But today, at times I'll just sit back. I'll drive to the, because we have two locations now, where we started from and we have a new state of the art facility. So I'll just drive to, so the, where we started from, which is the headquarter of the business in Brampton, as a retail outlet. So I'll just drive and park and I'll see the kind of people walking in. These are not Nigerians. That's not how we started seven years, six years ago in 2018. It wasn't like that way, you know. We started with just Nigerian. Then it moved to Caribbeans, Jamaicans buying the bread. Then the, the Asians, whether you're Chinese or Indians in Canada started having a taste of the bread. Then the next minute, you now see the Caucasians, the Canadians, all sort, all, all, all um, ethnic nationality patronizing us. And that was that made it very easy for us to grow out of the African Caribbean stores. And we now have the bread in the Canadian superstore. We have it in um, No Frills 
and these are big box supermarkets with thousands of branches across Canada. Importantly, quality and taste has to be number one for me because in a competitive world, you can imagine walking up to a, a supermarket and you see like 20 different types of bread, brands of bread, and that's what you see in, in, in Canada. And I'll say this, somebody actually joked with me or said something like, why do you want to start a bakery? Who told you they're going to buy your bread? Look at the number of bread already on the shelves of an average supermarket. I said, no, they don't have a Nigerian bread there. And that is what we started with, and that's what we're doing. See, we look at the model of the Chinese cuisine, Chinese food. Where in the world are you going to walk into and you won't see, oh, this is Chinese rice, Chinese food. They'll always be there. And that's what we plan to do with Nigerian cuisine, Agege bread. So today, we're in, in almost everywhere in Canada. There are 10 provinces and um, territories in Canada. We can safely say when six of those provinces already. We're in Calgary, we're in Ottawa. We ship the bread to British Columbia. We're in, um, we ship it to um, New, New Brunswick. We ship it to Prince Edward Island. We ship it to Newfoundland, Nova Scotia. These are different provinces, like our equivalent of states in, in Canada. And this cut across east to west of, of, of Canada. So it's quality, quality. And that is what I think is the most important thing and consistency with the quality. So many challenges will always come up when you're trying to set up a business, especially when you're doing it outside your, your own environment, outside where you've grown up over 40 years, you know, just being two years in Canada. It was, but the first thing that, we, that came away was the funding for the business. We didn't anticipate the amount of um, fund that would be required. The initial outlay is a lot of money. Unlike here, where manual processes can be adopted and people will do it, you know, a lot of our processes has to be automated. So which means you need machines that can do some of this. An average bakery in this part of the world will probably not have up to 25% of the investment you need over there. You're not going to get anybody to use ants to mix dough for you in Canada. Nobody's going to do it. You're probably not going to get anybody to use and to, to mold it apart from mixing. No, you're not going to get that done. But these are things that you can get away with if you're setting up a bakery here. Yeah. So automation, I mean, and the cost of buying the equipment, which is part of the startup cost, was a major, major challenge for us. And immediately we were able to solve that, of course. We, we new, being new in Canada, you don't have a um, credit profile. You're new, you don't even have access to credits. Even if they're going to get a facility from the bank, you, they don't know you in terms of a, a, a business, a new business. All we needed to do then was to look for ways of, um, we call it asset transfer. Some of the things we have uh, that can be sold off because we don't need them. F getting some money from family and friends, which came handy to help us to set up the business without unnecessarily incurring interest rates that will come with taking a loan from the bank. But these are normal things that is in the business. But the one that really shocked us was nobody to work, no bakers to recruit in Canada. And that was when I now realized, okay, what actually, why are we in Canada? It was just because Canada said they're looking for workforce, they have um, aging workforce, they need people to come and work. That's what led us to, I mean, most immigrants in Canada. Up to today, I think when I moved to Canada, the population was about 35 million, but today is about 30 million. So which means in the last seven years, Canada has been able to, through immigrants, increase the population. And this is a statistic that's confirmed by the government of Canada. The population of Canada actually grew. 98% of it is through immigrants. So 2% is just growth from maybe child baths and stuff like that within Canada. 
it's basically immigrants have grown the population of Canada. So we now had our own fair share of lack of people to do the job. But like I said, the government will always provide a way around some of these um, challenges that business will, will, will have to overcome. And how did we do that? Or we work with the government. There's something called LMIA, which is Labor Market Impact Assessment, which means as a company or as a business, if you're unable to find required skill sets within Canada, you are allowed to bypass all of the immigration routes for people coming to Canada to recruit from abroad. So how do you recruit people to bake agege bread? You have to come back to Nigeria. So today we have four people that we've gotten approval for six people from the government of Canada. Three of them have landed and they're working with us right now in, in our bakeries locations in Canada. In the next couple of weeks, two weeks, the fourth guy will be joining them. And um, maybe before the end of the year or next year, the last two will come. So I will always advise people, let the quality be top notch. Don't compromise on the quality. So that's one of the things Nigerians liked about our product, which helped every other people, I mean, every other ethnic nationality to accept the product in Canada. Ever since I first tried your bread, I knew this was going to be a success story. Uh, you can't match the magic of Nigerian bread. Uh, and, you know, I shared a video uh, last year um, about our tour of your headquarters in Brampton and um, it, it went viral. It went viral. Uh, our city's love uh, for your bread. I've said this many times. My son will only eat. He's four years old. He's already made himself, uh, he's made his decisions. He will only eat quality of bread. Uh, <laughs> And that's yet another example of a Nigerian gaining respect and recognition abroad through creativity and entrepreneurship. And that's the show. You can catch all episodes of Diaspora Network on our YouTube channel. And of course, there's a lot more on our website. I'm Ijoma Onyato. See you next time.